Hi, I'm Emily Heron with Atlas Copco, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to program a source tightening on our PowerFocus platform. Today I'm going to be using a PowerFocus 8 using 3.10.9 software, but what I'm going to be talking about applies to all of the products on our PowerFocus platform, including IXB Integrated Controller and our new product Tools Control. Let's dive into the software. Following along in the software, you can see in the top right corner here, we have the Sources tab. When we click into the Sources tab, you're also going to see we have two options, Tightening and Batch Sequence. Today, we're going to be focusing on the Source Tightening. A Source Tightening is going to be used when we want to have some sort of external source select one of the tightening strategies we have programmed into the controller using an index. These source options include digital IOs, a field bus, or open protocol. Today I'm going to be using open protocol for my example. As with most of our other menus, if you want to add a new configuration, you can just go up to the top right corner here and click the plus button. This is going to create a general source tightening, and the first thing we should always do when creating any kind of configuration is to name it so we can identify it later. Since I'm using open protocol, I'm just going to name this open protocol demo. In the general properties, first we're going to see selector mode, control, and confirm. Control, pretty straightforward, is going to be used to control which tightening program is selected when the controller receives the index. Confirm is most commonly used with the socket selector to confirm that the tightening program selected matches the index. And you can see it adds a field down here to assign a socket number as well. We're going to be using just control today. There's going to be another video on setting up a socket selector that you can watch to get more information about confirm mode. Next, we have max consecutive not OK, which is a setting used to control the number of unsuccessful attempts and a tightening before locking the tool. Once the tool is locked, the controller would need to see another input to unlock the tool and another identifier to reselect the tightening strategy. If you just leave this at zero, that's going to give you an unlimited number of tries, and the controller is essentially going to ignore that setting. Now, let's say you have more than one tightening program in this configuration, and you want to control the max number of nut OKs per the strategy. So we're going to add another one here using the plus button, and we're going to toggle this max consecutive nut OK per program to yes. This is going to move the max consecutive nut OK setting down to the identifier section where you can now configure each one individually. I'm not using that for my example today, so I'm just going to turn that off. The last setting we have here in general properties is batch control. This is different from batch sequence, which is a group of tightening programs called by a single identifier, where batch control is still an individual tightening program, just run an expected number of times when called by an index. If we want to utilize batch control, we have two options, internal and external. Internal allows you to set the batch size next to the identifier number for the controller to confirm. External is going to remove that setting and now the controller is expecting a batch size from another source like the open protocol that you're using to call the identifier. Now when we turn on batch control, we do unlock other settings. We now have the option to lock the tool on batch sequence complete, which I always recommend you keep on. And we also have the option to determine if a not OK result should increase the batch count or not. I won't be using batch control for my example, so I'm actually going to turn this back off again. Lastly, in the settings under identifier selector configuration, we just have to assign all the necessary programs to a corresponding identifier. This is pretty straightforward. When the source sends identifier 1, I want to select tightening program 1. And when the source sends identifier 2, I want to select tightening program 3, and so on and so on, until you have all the programs selected that you need for this virtual station. And as always, you're going to want to hit apply to save all of your settings. Now, if we head back, you can see you can add as many unique source tightening configurations for different virtual stations to call different programs as needed. If we go back to the main screen and select the virtual station tab, you can see I have a license, I have a tool assigned, but I actually don't have a task for that tool. And this is where we need to assign the source tightening. So you'd open choose task, navigate over to the sources tab and select the one we configured, which in this case is our open protocol demo. Apply to save your changes. And that's all we need to do from the controller side in order to be able to run a source tightening. As you can see, I have no tightening program selected. And if I push the trigger on my tool, we actually get an error called wrong socket selected. This just means that the tool has not had a job assigned to it yet. So if I open the open protocol tester, you can see I'm already connected. I've already sent some commands back and forth just to test how it works. So if I go to select PSET in my open protocol tester and I see this drop down menu here, 
you'll notice I only have the option to select PSET 1 or 2. And that's because I only configured two options in that source tightening. So I'm going to select PSET number 1 and send that to the controller. And you can now see in the background here, my controller now is running Tightening Program 1. And if I pull the trigger on my tool, I can actually get a result. If I go back, select PSET identifier number two, you can see I'm running that expected tightening program number three, and I can run another tightening strategy. This is how a source tightening works with Open Protocol, but you can achieve the same results with a field bus or a digital IO as well using the same settings on the PowerFocus platform product. I hope what we showed you today was really helpful. If you have any further questions, please reach out to your local Atlas Copco representative. Thanks for watching.